Hi, uh, everyone. I'm Krishan Trinivasan, a fine art photographer and a long distance skater. And uh, we are here to talk about Broadway Bomb. And who we have here is one of the organizers of New York Longboard Association, Mr. Puneet Spark Chabra. And he has uh, allotted his time to talk about Broadway Bomb right in, uh, like in the peak time wherein like most people would need to address uh, all the route and things uh, and doubts that they need to understand about Broadway bomb, which is happening for more than two decades. So, sir, welcome, welcome to the show. And uh, thanks Thank for you. accepting the invite. And uh, yeah, sir, please tell us about yourself. Uh, well, uh, you know, we're, uh, thanks for having me. And we're here to uh, talk about Broadway Bomb. Uh, I'm not that interesting, but Broadway Bomb definitely is. Yeah. It's uh, been going on for 22 years, as you said, over two decades. It was uh, started by New York skaters uh, Ian Nichols and Fred Mai. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, they wanted to make a race that emulates uh, what it's like to be riding in New York City. And so they mm -hmm. developed this idea of let's go straight down Broadway. Uh, mm -hmm. And they actually used to start at 112th Street, but as mm -hmm. the the group of people grew and grew and grew, they were like, oh, we need a bigger space for the start <laughs> line. And that's how they ended up at 116. Um, mm -hmm. But what I really want to talk about is how Broadway's changed over the years. When they started this mm -hmm. race, you could actually start at the top and go straight down Broadway the whole way. But the city mm -hmm. has added in all these pedestrian plazas and these reroutes and everything. And it's actually made it a little more confusing to be able to get through it all. And I know you made your video uh, based mm. off of Google Maps to, yeah, to try to yeah. guide it. And, you know, even looking at Google Maps, it can be a little confusing, mm. you know. Uh, but the history of Broadway is really interesting. It, when it first was created, it was the only road in Manhattan for most of it. Everything else was private roads. It was surrounded by farms. and what they kind of did from essentially 14th street to like 71st street is they made it go and cut it at a diagonal. And since it oh. cuts out a diagonal, it it's a different type of ride than just going straight down one road. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it now it exists in a grid system. So wherever it crosses a street, it makes a mm -hmm. little funny angle and wherever mm -hmm. it crosses an intersection, it creates a giant square. And that's mm -hmm. where all the major landmarks are uh, mm -hmm. on Broadway from the 70s down to the 14th Street. So mm -hmm. each one of those landmarks like Union Square, Madison Square Park, Herald Square, Times Square, just to name a few, mm -hmm. that's where it gets confusing and kind of tough to get around. So yes. that's uh, what I'm here to kind of discuss and talk about so that we can you know, clarify and make sure that people know how to get to the, the, the finish line and be, get there safely. Because my main concern is making sure people are safe and nobody gets hurt uh, because okay. this is a dangerous sport. The, the tagline used to be, you may die because you actually may. Like, it is that scary. <laughs> so, um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, he, you know, as somebody who, who's been doing the ride since 2016, about eight years, I, uh, I feel like I know it pretty well now. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you my little tips. Um, mm -hmm. That So we started 116th in Riverside, and the first thing is a run up the hill. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people try to sprint this up the hill, but if you do that, you expend so much energy. You're already tired, and it's just the beginning of the race. So mm. I tend to, tend to tell people, jog up the hill. You'll make up any time lost on mm. the board once you're on the board. Once mm. people get up to the top of the hill, they throw their boards down, and they mm. turn right onto Broadway. Mm. And they you can go basically straight on Broadway for mm. about 45 streets. It's mm. not confusing at all. Mm. Um, it's part of the grid system there. It's not that weird diagonal I was talking about earlier. There is a pretty tough uphill from 94th to 92nd Street. So okay. plan for that, that, hey, there's this little steep, tough uh, uphill. And mm -hmm. some people will just walk up that those couple of blocks so that way they, they don't end up uh, exhausting themselves because it's still towards the beginning of the race. 
mm-hmm. from from 92nd again it's straightforward and the first kind of confusing area is 71st street that's okay. around the museum of natural history mm-hmm. and uh and i as you said in your video stay in the middle whenever there's a v stay in the middle over here uh there's a v, kind of a v sh- that happens and it's fairly easy to see where broadway is it's it's not too zigzaggy or anything like that but mm-hmm. there is traffic coming from the right side at a at, at a s- angle so mm-hmm. you might have to wait at the red light there uh mm-hmm. or deal with that traffic coming at that weird angle. Mm-hmm. Once you're past 71st street, it's pretty smooth until you hit Columbus circle, uh, mm-hmm. which is at 60th street. That mm-hmm. is where you really hit it. And now this is a typical roundabout that you would see in any European country in, in India or any place like yes. that. And you want to take the second right turn on Columbus circle. Now, mm-hmm. the reason this gets a little confusing is the first turn when you're coming off columbus circle is eight that that's traffic coming against you and Mm. then the second one is broadway coming right off again there is a v there and it's Mm. stay to the left uh Mm. to stay on there and Mm. uh get on um most people take the inside of columbus circle but Mm. i always Mm. suggest take the outside because if you take the inside and then the eighth Ave traffic is coming from the other Mm. way you have to cross all that traffic if you take Mm. the outside if the 8th Ave traffic is coming, you still have to wait for it, but you can kind of get past and sneak into the uh, Broadway a little bit easier. Mm. So, Sir, that's what, I, I, yeah, I have a doubt as an outsider. I've never been to yeah. New York before. So, is it possible to leave a small flag or do a, you know, like spray paint uh, somewhere on the road? Like for people to understand, you know, like, to follow this. we've discussed uh, trying to put chalk on the road or something like that. But the truth is, is that that stuff will rub off. Uh, oh. And if we spray paint, that would be vandalism. So, you know, we wouldn't really be allowed oh. to do that. Oh. But, uh, you know, if we could potentially put somebody there, that mm. is one of the most, you know, people get very turned around at Columbus. And mm. honestly, from Columbus to Union Square, which is 60th Street to 14th Street, people get lost all the time. That's why I'm trying to, you know, give these two cents, uh, these two bits of information to people so that they can uh, get there. But also, it's easy enough to miss a a sign or, you know, even somebody with a flag. I wish Mm. we had the manpower to be able to Mm. put a person at every one of these uh, landmarks so that there would be somebody guiding. But unfortunately, we don't have that manpower. We don't have, we, we would need a team of 30 volunteers to be able to do this, you know? So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and it's usually about five <laughs> that are helping out. So mm-hmm. um, we tend to leave them more at the finish line uh, to mm-hmm. help caps get scores and uh, the timings and everything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, again, there's too many of these little intersections to make that happen. But after Columbus Circle, you're that's you. You're basically that's 59th Street uh, mm-hmm. that you're you get off of Columbus Circle, um, and once you're going down there, you're good till 47th. Mm-hmm. Um, but 47th Street is where Times Square is, and this is the busiest part. Most mm-hmm. pedestrians, most traffic, and from what I'm reading. Uh, on the city's websites, there's a crane on 47th Street as well, blocking oh. traffic. So my in suggestion 2024? is uh, in, the, in 2024, in this year. Now, whether that road construction yeah. is yeah. is there or not, you know, uh, we'll find out on the day. But my suggestion, and it always is this, is to turn on 48th Street one block north. Because mm-hmm. if you turn on 47th, there's just a lot, a lot more pedestrian traffic. You can usually mm-hmm. turn on 48th. And then you have to turn right on 7th Ave. And essentially what we're doing here is we're zigzagging where if you're coming down Broadway, then you got to turn, mm-hmm. go on another road, turn mm-hmm. and get back on Broadway. Because Broadway, if the street 7th Ave is coming down straight and Broadway mm-hmm. is cutting across like this, we mm-hmm. have to come down, come to 7th, come down 7th and then go back mm-hmm. to Broadway. So mm-hmm. for Times Square, we would turn on 48th Street to get to, mm-hmm. um, uh, to get to, 
the actual uh, to 7th Ave. And then we would go down 7th Ave till 42nd Street. Mm. Now, if you were trying to stay on Broadway itself, you would hit pedestrian plazas that, mm. you know, have mm. landmarks and giant stairs and all sorts of stuff. So this is the safest way to make it. Uh, and you go down to 42nd Street and now you'll make a quick left on 42nd Street and a quick right onto Broadway. Again, mm. uh, if this is the grid and this is 7th Ave and this is 42nd Street, Broadway's mm. cutting across diagonally, so you kind of have to zigzag to stay on it. Once you're back on Broadway, then the next landmark is called Herald Square. And Herald Square mm. basically starts at 35th Street, and uh, what happens is you end up merging into 6th Avenue. Now, 6th Ave runs north against traffic, but between 34th and 32nd Street, there's a two-lane bike lane, two-way mm -hmm. bike lane. So you can go south on that bike lane. Some people will go south in traffic against uh, against traffic. I don't ever recommend that, but mm -hmm. you know the, the real speeders will do that. And essentially, you have to make a left onto 32nd Street. Mm -hmm. So you get off of Broadway on at 35th, 34th Street is kind of where it merges. And mm -hmm. you get back onto Broadway at 32nd Street. Mm -hmm. and then you're on 32nd. And the next landmark is Madison Square Park. Madison mm -hmm. Square Park is at 26th Street. And if you just keep going down Broadway, you'll mm -hmm. end up at 25th Street. But then you have to make a left against traffic on 25th. It's a very short block. Mm -hmm. If you do it, it's not a big deal. But I mm -hmm. always suggest people turn on 26th Street. So this mm -hmm. way you can get uh, over to 5th Ave. So you see, oh. first we went on 7th Ave and we had to get around. Then we had to get around on 6th Ave. Now we're trying to get around on 5th Ave. And mm -hmm. at 5th Ave, uh, Broadway uh, uh, cuts right across uh, from Madison Square Park. And essentially what you have to do to stay on Broadway is you, when you make, you turn left on 26th, you make a right on 5th Ave, but may, stay on your left-hand side and you'll be able to get into the uh, area for Broadway. If you stay on Fifth Ave over here, or even earlier, you stayed on Seventh Ave. At any point, you can just make a left turn until you hit Broadway and make your right turn. You know, you realize, oh my God, I'm at Seventh Ave and Thirty Fourth Street. Well, then you can go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. But uh, for Herald Square, it's turn left on Thirty Second and then a right onto Broadway. And then the next one is. Ma uh, uh, that was Union? Herald Square. Then Madis Madison Square Union? Park. Uh, um, we went over, stay left on the fifth. Then Union Square is the next one. Uh, now Union so, Square uh, is. Can I, oh, yeah. can I hold you please, for a please. second over there? Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Beats and Applesauce has uh, told me this in uh, about the Times Square thing. What he said is like uh, uh, from uh, in the path of Times Square at from 44th to 42nd Street doesn't exist as a lane, also. 31st to 32nd also don't turn into Times Square of Times Square at exactly, 40. which is why I'm telling you to be on 7th Ave uh, for the okay. in the 40s and be on 6th Ave for the 30s. That's exactly okay. why, yeah. And uh, uh, if you don't know Lake, who's Mr. Beats and Applesauce, he runs mm -hmm. Social Push, and he's actually the person in the video that I yes. was uh, made yes. last year. He's my my skate roll, uh, skateboard model. So he's a great guy and absolutely right. That's exactly on point. Uh, mm -hmm. That essentially what we're trying to do is wherever there's this pedestrian plaza that the city has given, you know, areas for humans instead of cars to be, you know, mm -hmm. 20 years ago when the race started, th there were none of these pedestrian plazas. You could just skate right through. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, these plazas provide an important service for the city and mm -hmm. a place for people to be. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it is important. So mm -hmm. we talked about Madison Square Park. The next one is Union Square. Yeah. Union Square, typically people would always turn left onto 17th mm -hmm. Street and then mm -hmm. a right onto Park Avenue. We don't have a 4th Avenue in this area of the city. It's just mm -hmm. Park Avenue here. Okay. Um, and then once you get south of... 14th Street Park Avenue actually basically turns into Broadway. So mm -hmm. you once you turn onto Park, you basically can go straight and get right there. Mm -hmm. However, some people like to go down on the west side of the park 
and then mm-hmm. turn left onto Union Square and then turn right onto uh, uh, mm-hmm. turn left onto 14th Street and turn right onto Broadway. Personally, mm-hmm. I don't think that's the faster route. Um, and it used to be very bad cobblestone, but they have paved it over. So mm-hmm. it's not as bad anymore. So it is doable. Um, depending on what you see in the day, you might want to go around on the right or you might want to go on the left. That, that's oh. kind of... But once you get past 14th Street and you're on Broadway, it is a straight shot. Again, you're mm-hmm. part of the grid system and mm-hmm. there is no no confusing Vs or anything like that. The only really tough part at that point is crossing major intersections like Houston, Canal, Delancey, which are two-way intersections. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of traffic coming from both sides. Mm-hmm. So, you know, other than that, those those are like the, the main tips and tricks in getting around those zigzags. It's really just kind of like you have to make a quick left, a quick right, a quick left, a quick right, a quick left, a quick mm-hmm. right to, mm-hmm. to get around all those pedestrian plazas. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. And uh, then my other big tip is be safe. Don't ride above your abilities. And, uh, you know, no, uh, it's, no, yeah. Yeah, well, those are rules. So, yeah, no mm-hmm. sketching is uh, don't grab onto any other skaters or uh, bikers. You know, and that's if you really want your time to be counted. If somebody isn't, uh, um, uh, you know, care about their ca- time being counted, maybe they'll uh, sketch a little bit or something like that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you know, I saw, I've seen a video wherein like people, electric skateboarders, offering hand to uh, skaters because like they got stopped by the NYPD at some point, so they lost their timing, so they want to help. So uh, they didn't take it anyway. But yeah, you know, like yeah, they wouldn't take it. Uh, I think uh, last year, uh, Jason got uh, yeah. like stopped by the cops pretty badly. Uh, I remember it in his video. Um, and, uh, you know, last year there was a indigenous people's day parade that was happening Uh and it was cutting right through Broadway and some people were able to sneak into through it. Some people Mm. weren't, and it was kind of a mess. Uh, Mm. you know, I, um, I, uh, I usually ride, uh, the past few years, my electric skateboard and I try to stay with first place, uh, of the men's kick push, uh, which Mm. last year was Daniel and, uh, on mm-hmm. the New York Longboard Association, you can actually see one continuous live video. Mm-hmm. And the same area where Jason got stopped, I, I had a bit of trouble as well and oh. had to go slow for a section there. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, if you see a parade or there's a major road closure, you might want to go around it uh, in some way or another. So, for example, mm-hmm. that one was in just below Madison Square Park. So I think it was mm-hmm. around 23rd Street is where the mm-hmm. parade started. And mm. the the best solution for that would have been to stay on Fifth Ave instead of getting on Broadway there and go down to like 18th Street or 17th Street and then turn there, you know? Mm-hmm. So, but again, we never know what's going to happen. And that's part of the fun of it, you know, part of the challenge. Cool. So, so uh, is it okay for people to uh, track themselves on any GPS device and, uh, you know, Account yeah. that timing instead of timing it only at the end in the you know, charging bill location. I mean, people certainly uh, can, but what we try to do is we try to put a camera at the finish mm-hmm. line. So this oh. way, whenever people are passing, we have this mm-hmm. footage, and that mm-hmm. we what I, I we try to do is put a three sixty camera. So on this side, it's looking at a clock, and on the mm-hmm. other side, it's looking at the finish line. So this way, we can mm-hmm. know exactly when. First place passes, second place passes, third place passes, you know, and we try to get as many timings written down right away mm-hmm. as possible, um, mm-hmm. you know, but it can be very hectic at the finish line and more volunteers would be great. But, you know, mm-hmm. it's hard to organize people for a totally free event, you know, cool, cool. that so, is an important uh, part to make. It's a totally free event. There should be never mm-hmm. anyone charging for this. <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome so like how long will it take to complete the entire event like as an, uh, on the day so so it depends on your skill levels and everything but the men's first place usually comes in just a little bit above 20 minutes 22 minutes wow. 23 minutes and wow. it's very very fast um and 
you know, the, that those guys are going at unbelievable speeds. Uh, mm -hmm. Daniel, uh, Lindsay and Titus, uh, for example, they, they both are just such fast skaters and they're able to maintain these high speeds continuously for so long. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think that most people should try even keeping up with them. <laughs> um, but typically, uh, the majority of people come in around 35 to 55 minutes is usually what it takes. And, you know, like there are people who will, you know, they're not racing, they're not rushing and they'll take breaks along the way. It is eight mm -hmm. miles long. So, mm -hmm. you know, they might take a little breather here or there and catch their mm -hmm. breath. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's perfectly fine, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and then after the race, there is an after party at a skate park in Brooklyn, just over the Manhattan mm -hmm. Bridge. So it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, fairly easy to get to and, you know, should be a good, good time. So uh, we can count, like, uh, we complete the race in one on one and a half hours and get to the after party immediately. Yeah. Um, most people will finish the race within the first hour. You know, some people will take a little longer. I've seen people mm -hmm. come in as late as, like, 1.30, uh, which is about an hour and a half. Um, but... Uh, um, but typically most people uh, that are skating, it will do it in, in about 45 to 50 minutes. Is, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. So what are the do's and don'ts, uh, in terms of NYPD, you know, like, uh, uh do's, uh, have fun, skate safely, be polite mm -hmm. and nice to everybody. Don't, don't be dangerous. Uh, don't, don't give them cause to say, Hey, we need to stop this race. You know, mm -hmm. in, uh, mm -hmm. 2011, I think it was something like 2000 people showed up and mm -hmm. it was so extreme that the, in 2012, they tried shutting down the race very mm -hmm. unsuccessfully, but they did arrest a bunch of people and give them, uh, you know, like $60 tickets or $50 tickets. And mm -hmm. it wasn't that big of a deal, but it was still like, you know, against the community and it didn't solve anything because the next year everybody was back again, you know? Um, but now NYPD typically tries to help us. And the way they typically help us is they follow the group slowly for several blocks, mm -hmm. right? So this way, when the mass of people come up, they go slow and block traffic from behind for quite a bit of time. Oh, but that's as amazing as the group spreads out because it's the group is only really big for a few blocks. And then the mm. people who are going fast, get up in the front and the people who are going slow kind of trail to the back and the people in the middle trail. By the time you're getting to Columbus circle, for example, you, mm. you might not even see another mm. more than two or three skaters around you. And, yeah. you know, at that point, it's like, you're just riding in like a typical ride you, and, you know, uh, some people might choose to do things like run red lights and, Chances are the NYPD is not going to give you a hard time about that, uh, but cool. they can if they choose to. However, mm -hmm. if you run a red light and you hit a pedestrian, you better believe that someone's going to say something and give you a hard time. You know, don't get hit by a car. You know, mm -hmm. don't hit a pedestrian, and uh, you know, stay safe. <laughs> cool, cool. Thank you, sir. That's all I have uh, got to ask you about yeah. the Broadway bomb and we kept it short so that people can understand more about the race. Yeah, Thank this you. is Thanks about the route. This. We yeah. can talk more about the history of Broadway bomb or New York longboarding or any of that stuff another time. But this yeah. is about keeping people on track for the race so they're safe. And awesome. remember, we, we start at noon on the nose so that way mm -hmm. people know, mm -hmm. get there early so that you have enough mm -hmm. time to be ready to leave at noon. All cool, right. Cool. Sir, All at right? the end of the video, so do you have to say anything to the people who were aspiring to be a long distance skater from this part of the world? Uh, you know, you know, uh, every push counts. Every push starts. When I, when I started, I could barely do a mile or two. And then mm. I got to a point where I could do like 15, 20 miles, no problem. And then mm. unfortunately I ended up with Lyme disease and mm. I now am back to, square one but i still try and i still you know do it at my own pace and you know everybody learns at their own pace so mm. just take your time and keep practicing and have fun with it that's the most important thing
Thank you so much. Right. Thanks for doing Thank this. Thank you so Andrew. much, Krishna. Namaste. Vanakum. Namaste. <laughs> Have a wonderful right. day, sir. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.